Well, hello everybody, Jonathan Doyle with you once again. Welcome friends to the Catholic Teacher Daily Podcast, wherever you are in the world. And you are everywhere in the world, wherever you're hearing this, there are so many interesting different places and people that are caught up in this great journey of Catholic education. Happy feast day, friends. Today is the feast of one of the great saints of Catholic education. John Bosco, often referred to as Don Bosco, the founder of the Salesians. We're going to talk about him in a minute. I, uh, I love being Catholic. I love praying the Divine Office in the morning because you get a uh, you get all the saints. You get sort of each day you get uh, to read about the different incredible men and women that have um, paved the way for us. That have uh, shown by their heroic virtue what's possible for us. I really love that. Often when I'm speaking on stage to teachers, I, I make the distinction that the Catholic Church does not make saints. It's not as if there is a committee in the Vatican and they sit around and they go, oh, I guess we better roll out a few new ones. Anybody got any ideas? In the beautiful language of the Church, the Church doesn't make saints or create saints. The saint, uh, the Church, ready for it, recognizes saints, recognizes them. It's, uh, it's simply under grace, the Church, as the great mother that keeps the children together on the journey, she, she presents to us, the men and women, who, uh, who have shown us sort of the path ahead, what's possible. Such an incredible, diverse mix. So we're going to talk about Dom uh, Bosco in a second. What else? I want to tell you a couple of things. I've, um, yesterday... I got really stressed. I don't know about you. I'm sure for you as a Catholic teacher, you don't get stressed. <laughs> you don't burn out. You just sit around every day drinking daiquiris, thinking to yourself, this is the greatest vocation in the world. It's just easy for you. But uh, I've got to let you in on a secret. For some of us, we, we get stressed. There's a lot going on. And yesterday, you know, our three kids are, are back at school. School started again today. And it's a mix of kids that are going to school and kids were homeschooling. And... And I am, I just have a low threshold for complexity and stress. I just, I just don't have, you know, I just don't, I wasn't born with it. As I get older, I'm learning about the distinct personality the good Lord created me with. So I, what I, what happened was I was feeling pretty frayed and like you'd relate to this, right? Because a lot of the time you've got so much that you have to do. The classic engine of stress, the cause of stress if, if you ever heard of the yerkes dodson curve it's like a stress happens because we perceive oncoming drawdowns oncoming drains upon our available resources basically stress happens because we believe that there is more coming at us than we can handle and we get a stress response and sometimes to me it feels like that's every day but anyway here's the point of this somewhat drawn out story is in my brain, I was like, okay, now I'm stressed. <laughs> it's like 10 o'clock. I'm like, right, I'm stressed now. I got this all this stuff on my plate. And I just kind of realized that I had to just get to work on all this stuff. But you know what I actually did? I was that stressed. I jumped in the car and I drove to the cathedral because I'm usually there most days. I, I always pray best in churches, beautiful churches. So I sat in the back of the cathedral with my Apple AirPods Max playing rain sounds <laughs> i have an app that plays rain sounds gosh this is a very this is a very revelatory podcast today isn't it you're getting an insight into the complexity of my day because i love the silence and i had this incredible time of prayer just sort of sitting in silence and telling the lord what i was experiencing and feeling and and I would say, like a lot of us, I don't believe I hear God speaking to me a great deal, but I just had this strong sense of the beautiful scripture from Matthew's gospel, you know, come to me or you who labor and are heavy burdened. And I opened my Bible and I sat with that and it was profound. And, you know, I left there and all the challenges and complexity and problems were still there, but I was kind of different. And the journey that I'm on at the moment which is the one I want to invite you all on, is just this gradual, ongoing descent into trust. Into slowly letting go of the belief that I have to know how everything's going to turn out, that I can be sure of everything. And also being purged of the belief that if I just try harder and work harder and push myself harder, then everything will work out. So... 
This ties into the second thing I wanted to share, which was we've been uh, watching The Chosen as a family each night, and we've you know we've been watching it on and off for a couple of years. And recently, the, the series season three was on at the theater, so we went to the cinemas and watched that. And I think we've got one episode left to watch tonight. And just you know, I just watched that uh, scene where Jesus is commissioning the twelve. Shout out to my good friend Michael Lancaster, who actually put that in an email to me the other day, reminded me of it. And there's just this, it's beautifully done if you haven't seen it. It's Jesus actually sending the 12 out. And it's so human. I think what The Chosen does really well is it is it gives us that very human insight. You see these men and women basically trying to, I guess, in, interpret what the presence and action of Jesus in their life means. And... Some of them in that scene are worried about death. Some of them are worried about rejection. Some of them are worried about, you know, being away from other priorities and commitments. It's very human. And all of it, both their journey and also the way that Jesus is presented, is this constant refrain around trust. You know, Pope Benedict used to say that that the ultimate identity of Jesus in his earthly journey was he is revealed as the son of the father. And his identity was so utterly rooted in that reality, which led to this profound trust. You know, which makes the agony of the cross itself so extraordinary, right? For, you know, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If if Jesus' complete identity was rooted in sonship, what it must have been like to to feel that um, that that break. Anyway, I digress. But my point is that both in yesterday's stress and in the lives of the greatest saints, the apostles, we're all on this journey of invitation into deeper and deeper trust. You've got to catch yourself in the moment. You've got to catch yourself in the moment. Constantly catch yourself in that moment of self-reliance. And I'm just learning to do it. I'm just going, Lord, I trust you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. This is hard. All right, so what I wanted to do is just share with you a beautiful quote from... uh, Don Bosco, now, sorry, so John Bosco, or Don Bosco, as he was uh, named, what makes him so interesting is, I said to my son today, I was driving him to school, he started the eighth grade this morning, and we're chatting away, and and I tell him, I said, you know what made, you know, John Bosco so different was, education before that, at least formal structured education, the, the dominant form of pastoral care was basically beating students right and i know there's a couple of you listening right now thinking "Mm, i wonder if we go back to that no you can't all right drop that you can't (laughs) yes it may be effective in the short term but no you're not allowed to do that it's terrible stop it go to confession now you know really for for before john bosco and some of the other great saints of that educational revival such as say marcel and champagne as well Children were were really second class citizens in many ways. They they you know they could be beaten regularly, and so a lot of the times students were beaten into submission. Even my own father, who's been dead for a long time, he was left handed in the nineteen fifties and was constantly beaten by um, by religious brothers at the at the school he was at. He was beaten for the great sin of being left handed because at that time they often thought it was demonic. So what makes Bosco so amazing is that he believed that the best thing you could possibly do was love your students, was to love students and to act to them with great patience and kindness. And today in the Divine Office, I read this letter and he wasn't a great sort of theologian or writer. It's very simple what he writes, but he's like, we have to, he goes, we're going to, sometimes we'll feel angry, but we need to moderate it and we need to love them. We need to be gentle and kind. And friends, that's really revolutionary. So the simple quote that I found here, because there's not a lot of them, there's not a, a significant number of quotes attributed to him, but there's one here that's quite beautiful where he says, the school was not the end. It was rather the instrumental means for improving the way of life. You know, Marcel Champagne said that the purpose of a of a Christian school was to create uh, good Christians and good citizens. It's a beautiful, simple concept. And 
you know, you can see Bosco here saying that I didn't create schools because I wanted to be able to sit at dinner parties saying, hey, I created a school. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm a school creator. He, he didn't do that. The school was simply what he says here, the instrumental means, the vehicle for improving the way of life. So students trapped in poverty could improve the way of life through education, through learning. They might have more options but also improving the moral character, the sense of justice and, and decency and the virtues, the theological virtues, the cardinal virtues being formed in students. So friends, in summary, that is what you are part of. Isn't it great to realize that you are, when you get to heaven, you are going to meet people like John Bosco? You know, in the mystical body of Christ, we will know each other and you know, you will meet these people, but you'll realize in many ways how similar you were. That, yeah, maybe you don't haven't started a school. Maybe you don't think you're going to be a great saint. But the fact is that each day that you show up and try and care for young people and improve their way of life, their kindness, their 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 respect, their decency, their patience, their care for others, their love of Christ, their love of the sacraments, their love of the faith. Each of those things is improving their life in profound ways that you may never see. Amazing. All right, that's it. I'm learning slowly to know when to stop. <laughs> it's 11 minutes. God bless you. Uh, send me an email if you want to say hi. Jonathan at onecatholicteacher.com Look, in the next few months, I'll, I'm going to start giving you some access to a whole bunch of stuff that we're doing in terms of curriculum resources for schools around the world that's going to be really developing for us we're doing some amazing work with many dioceses around the world so i should be more diligent in putting that on your radar so i'll do that but for now god bless you thank you for listening to the daily podcast if you like it just subscribe to it and and grab the link wherever you're listening and send it to a few catholic teachers it's a huge blessing it's growing it's just great to see it's touching touches one more life one more teacher around the world that's a cool thing god bless you everybody my name is jonathan doyle this has been the catholic teacher daily podcast and you and i are going to talk again tomorrow